Good morning. Good morning, people of God. Good morning, people of God. I hope everyone um, rested well. Mm. Excuse me. Happy Monday. I hope you rested well. Um, I got something so much on my spirit right now that um, I don't know how what where my language is going to go in this video. I'm going to just flow in the spirit, but um, I believe this message is going to be titled, You're Not Crazy, You Need a Deliverance. And this is more so centered to um, our young folk, our young people, you know, and, and, and there may be some older brothers and sisters too, but, but specifically to the young people and you parents that have young children, you know, the enemy is, is really after, um, the minds, the hearts of the young folk because they are less mature, um, you know, and, and many are not really disciplined in the flesh and in the word of God. And, you know, our young people have been under attack and they can't see their adversary. They don't know their adversary. And those of you who are of the faith, who are men and women of God, you know, um, the church has failed a lot of our young people. And, and those who are, you know, uh, many of us who who say we're men and women of God, maybe we have failed them, you know, because we are the church, right? So maybe we have failed them because, um, you know, I just think about sometimes we label, you know, we label people with our mouths and it's okay to recognize the errors of our ways because words are spirit. And, you know, uh, I draw from uh, the late mother, um, the late Mother Ray, you know, she said, uh, thoughts are things, right? You can send energy out toward anybody, you know, when you think of them negatively and there's no love there. And I remember I had a young cousin. He, I apologized to him in my adult life. This was just about maybe two years ago because when he was a small child, he was the only boy amongst us, my grandmother's kids, and he was youngest. And even the adults, they would call him a certain name, which I'm not going to mention, but they would call him a name. And at that time, and many of us, when we would get frustrated with him, we would call him a name. And we did a lot of name calling growing up. And I did not know that we were prophesying. We were speaking over people's lives. And so as I grew, grew wiser and grew a little older, and I'm still learning, I realized that many of the names and labels that we put on people, they had, they became those things or they had to fight off those things. Many of the names and labels that people put on me as a child and growing up through the years, I had to fight off those spirits that they tried to sit, that they sent my way ignorantly. And many of our young people and, and they, they're battling spirits of suicide. They're battling uh, anxiety, depression, tormenting demons. You know, the enemy is, and, and, and they, they got hurt on the inside of them. And they're young and operating in pride and, you know, too prideful to to, 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 to just be honest. They come out in a way and, and they, they sometimes come off disrespectful and they can be disrespectful. But then that's where the nurturing comes in to, to break down that pain by, giving it love and, and trying to understand, not saying you got to tolerate disrespect now, especially not from no grown folk. When you've done your job and raising them, then they can be disrespectful. Sometimes you got to just go ahead, let them go their way. And you pray for them though. You know, you pray for them and don't speak words against them in secret because again, words are spirit. But I just see you know, a lot of young people, the enemy wants to kill them. He wants them to abort their calling. He want to use them to do foolishly in the world. And then he want to turn around and take their lives so they never get on the wrong track. You know, and you got a lot of people who are dealing with depression and they sitting around thinking, what's wrong with me? I'm I just crazy, you know, and then they go and try to get medicated and medical help and all that do is make them relax when really they have an enemy uh, that they're fighting and is spiritual. And because many of us 
um, uh, who are in the believers and many are in the church, you know, they, they, they fail to, to, to see these spirits and to help, uh, these young people understand what they're fighting and, and to get a deliverance and their minds have to be trained and in the word of God. And, and, you know, they need to know, like I was, um, it was a while back, I was talking with this, um, young lady and her daughter, you know, she used to run away a lot. And this was years ago. They used to call me all the time for the runaways. It seemed like the, especially two young ladies, they would run away and go with their boyfriends and, and, and have sex looking for a way to, you know, just, just get out and, and, and find love in the wrong places. But it was something that every time I would reach out, I could always find these ladies and they would always be honest with me. And I would end up taking them home. And one of them, she would, her and her mother, she would be disrespectful and I was fighting her mom. Uh, she was Sudanese. There were some things that she was going through, but it seems like she would just had a way she would, would cling to me. And so I didn't, I was young in my young 20s, but I was like, okay, I got a little daughter, little sisters, you know. And, um, but these young girls were dealing with spirits you know, that would come upon them, um, through their pain. Um, and, and, and some of the, like I said, the ones that were having sex, you know, they open other doors to their soul, developing soul ties and, and you just get so tangled and tangled and tangled. And I realized it was through me just loving on them and, you know, I had standards and I would get, you know, I would, I would deal with them and, and some, and, 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 and be real, you know, because sometimes it's young people try to take the piss out you too. So you got to let them know some things, <laughs> but they had great respect for me, you know, and they didn't want me to be angry with them. So there was something that they saw there, which I think it all credit goes to the spirit of God, you know? But I was young at that time, you know, in my life as well. And I didn't, I, I didn't have everything organized or I wasn't on the path that I was on now. You know, I think I was still involved in uh, and not really heavily involved, but, you know, I, I, I was still tied to idolatry, secret societies and stuff like that. But these young girls just needed someone to listen and pray over them and love on them and call those spirits out. You know, point those things out to them. You know, a lot of our young people, they turn, they, 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 their behavior sometimes can be disgusting to us. But sometimes they're just crying out for attention. They're crying out for love. They have a pain on the inside of them and no one seems to care. No one seems to want to get to the root of it. You know, there's some of our young people, and I was talking to one of the young ladies' mom. She was just said, oh, she just crazy. I said, don't, she ain't crazy. Don't call her crazy. You know, words that come from parents hold power. You know, they hold power. And if your parents don't understand you, that right there, it's a, it, it, it can be, painful because the people in the world ain't gonna have patience to understand you you know and young people you got to be respectful as well and you got to realize that your enemy is all of our enemy we only got one adversary you know and that is satan that is the demons that are tied to the soul and this one young girl you can look in i looked in her eyes sometimes i can look in folk eyes and i can see an evil spirit and that spirit will look down you know, and you can't just, the Bible says, lay hands on no man suddenly. These young folks, they need deliverance. They're not crazy. The enemy has attached himself to their soul, makes them act out in a way, makes them want to kill themselves, and they really need deliverance. Even they can't explain it sometimes. They know how they feel. They know this feeling that comes upon them, you know, and sometimes they get and start behaving weirdly but really they just need deliverance they need deliverance they need someone to lay hands on them but they cannot have deliverance without 
having the knowledge, without having the education. And what I mean by that is without having the support system. When they get deliverance, you know, when these evil spirits are cast away, when they have folk that can pray and war with them in the spirit, then they also going to need consistent support. They're going to need cons- consistent prayers. They're going to need consistent love. <laughs> what does the Bible say? When an evil spirit is cast out of a man, it goes and it roams and it goes and gathers seven other spirits. So when it comes back to reoccupy, that place is not clean, you know, so they're going to need to understand why they got to stop doing certain things and why you got to stop fornicating, why you got to, you know, I love you. You are love. You are not alone. I'm here to help you heal. I'm not against you. You know, these are things that they will understand. And sometimes these evil spirits block their understanding. It blocks them. So they they need strong men and women of God that will not continue to curse them, speak death over them, but will speak life that can see past that spirit. Even if you have to stop communicating with them until you pray till they reach a point where they are ready to be humble and listen and then you can pray and they they gotta want it they gotta want deliverance but when they want it you gotta be in a position where you can help them where we can all help them heal and be delivered and as we help them heal we gotta help them understand the word of god you know, um, and, 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 you know, I talked, I talked about the other day, keeping our eyes on God and, and operating in faith, but I also want to go back. I talked about Matthew 17. I want to go back to Matthew 17. When we go back to Matthew 17, that is a prime example of how an evil spirit can control these young folk. Because what did that man say in Matthew 17? I think it was around verse 20. Um, that man came to Jesus. He said his, his son, his boy had an evil spirit. That evil spirit would take his son. Basically, his son was suicidal, right? It wasn't his son. It was the evil spirit that had taken possession of his son and made his son throw himself in the fire sometimes, jumping around, having seizures and stuff sometimes. And the disciples, they couldn't cast the spirit out. They were afraid. They, 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 they didn't really believe. And look at how much knowledge we got going on in the world today. Everybody got an opinion, you know, and then you get science get involved. And so they they, they put things on science to where uh, you have spiritually gifted men and women who can see certain spirits and they can begin to pray. But even some people who are gifted, they decide to close their mouths and and just be quiet and hide their gifts because people will look at you and say, oh, you're crazy. Uh, people who have a a scientific way, a medical way of explaining things. Um, We revert back to just a, a, you know, mental health and not saying that we don't need that. All of that needs to come together, but people of God who are spiritually gifted should be at every table. They should be at every table. They should be in every arena in the government from the highest level to the lowest level. In the medical fields, from the highest level to the lowest level. In the law enforcement fields, from the highest level to the lowest level. Because life is spiritual. But for so long, you have people who have tried to silence, not tried, but have silenced God's people. People who have ostracized God's people. People who have pushed God's people to the back when they know they should have been to the front. They didn't understand you. You know, a lot of God's people weren't understood. And life is spiritual. We see all hell constantly breaking through in the earth. And a lot of people don't understand what's happening. And God has a lot of his people in the earth shining their light, ringing the alarm. And some people are trying to learn. You know? So we got to be more open. We got to have more grace and mercy for these young folk. You know, in Matthew 17, that demon wanted to destroy that boy. It made him act out in certain ways. And his father knew it wasn't his, his son. 
And then he went to people of God, but they couldn't help him. He went to people of God and they could not help him. So he went to find Jesus. And Jesus said, oh, how long must I be with you, you unbelieving perverse? You see? Unbelieving perverse people. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed. I laid hands on a lady one time. She wanted to be delivered. She was carrying so much pain. The Lord showed me. Drinking. The Lord said she's trying to silence the voices that she hear. See, when we're, whatever we feed, it grows. And many of us, that we say we sometimes we hear in the spirit. You know, God can speak to us. Don't you think that forces of darkness speak to those who are of darkness? And they hear these voices. You know, I had a friend one time, he, he has passed away now, but he, um, he was battling some things the Lord showed me and he would always call me. I'm like, why someone so call me? And, you know, he turned to drinking a lot. And then there was a time he was, um, in the vicinity and I, vi- I visited him and I allowed him to come to my home. Everybody, I had some people warn me, oh, don't let him come. Um, You know, he can get crazy, but I wasn't afraid of him. I saw the spirit. I saw what he was dealing with, and he never disrespected me. He was well on his well behavior. You know, we went to high school together. Um, I had him sleep on my couch, and he was very good with his hands. He cleaned gutters. He did things around the house. He went to work with me. He clung to me for about a week or two, you know, and then um, he would, uh, I saw where he would listen to music. He was trying to drown out the voices that he heard here. He was being normal, you know, but I could tell he was under spiritual attack. And there were things from his childhood that he was carrying, you know, and I won't go into too many details. But um, while he was with me, he said he got the best sleep that he ever had. He'd never be able to sleep in the midnight. You see, there are some people who are really being tormented by darkness. And it takes those who are of God, those who are of the light, to really shine that light and to really share love, to really go out into the earth and share your gift. Give your gift to the people that need it. Not saying let people drain you. Because life is spiritual. And we got to stay to ourselves. We got to have enough for us too. But there's the reason there's so much loneliness and isolation. Because there are people who have, how can I say it? There are people who they see their gift. And don't get me wrong. We all have to live in this earth. But there are people who sell their love. There are people who sell their gifts. You know, the Bible tells us our gifts will make room for us. Our skills, what we can do, the creativity that God has given us, the things we can create, that will draw us income. That will draw us resources. But when it comes to spiritual, the word of God, operating in the things of God, we are to go out into the earth freely we have received. The gift to see in the spirit, the gift to lay hands, the gift to help heal, the gift to live, the, the gift to deliver, the gift to minister the word of God. Freely we have received and freely we give those things. And the reason there's so much loneliness, isolation, even from the people of God, is because everybody is looking to money to share those things that have been given freely. Versus using your gifts, the talents that you have, and you putting those into place to draw your resources and let God bring, let God bring and add other increases to really trust God. Nobody is trusting God. And don't get me wrong, nobody want to be operating from a place of lack. It don't feel good, right? Nobody want to 
operate from a place of lack. But I think many of us are focused more on securing our bags than we are in spreading love and sharing the gifts of God and the word into the earth. The church is powerful. The church is powerful. The spirit of God operates through his people. And the more we get out and we share and we're bold, we can help more people. And a lot of our young people, the enemy is just, he's just trying to take them out by the handfuls. If he ain't trying to use them to hurt other brothers and sisters, he's trying to use them to hurt themselves. We need to be praying for these folk, helping these folk get a deliverance. Our young folk, they're not crazy. They just need to be delivered. When Jesus laid hands on that boy, and he commanded that spirit off of him, instantly that boy was healed. He received his deliverance. And some of our young people, they need to be delivered. And all it takes is showing a little love compassion, getting to the root of things and praying for them. Even if we don't speak the words to them, you can pray for folk. Remember back in the day, the young folk, the older folk used to stand up in the church and testify, (laughs) tell your business. Yeah, thank God my son here went to, got in trouble for this, but then I prayed and then got this and I'll tell all your business in a testimony. But the older folk, they would spend time praying really spent time praying and they would see the change manifest and some of them prayers right now today some of you your mother your father they may be dead and gone but many of their prayers are your grandmother grandfather many of their prayers are working over your lives here today lord please protect my baby protect them in the earth god don't let no untimely death come on them Don't let nobody take their lives. Don't never let them have to turn to robbing and stealing and killing. Protect them from that evil one. Many of you, your prayers. Many of you, you've had your hand in the streets, drugs. You know, you could have been dead and gone. But you turned. At some point, there was a light that went off. And you washed your hands. You turned the other way. And you got to defeat and and bind and cast that spirit of sorcery off of your life. You're fighting the spirit, you know, many of you. So our young folk, I know I probably was all over the place, but I ain't really had no sense of direction. Just speaking what was on my heart. Our young folk need prayer. They're not crazy. They just need a deliverance. That's all. They need a deliverance. Young people need the deliverance. There needs to be a a revival, you know, all over the nation, all over the world. Many of us, we need to, folk need to organize and and link up and, and just have a revival come to Jesus meeting for these young people, you know? Look at all the killings and they picking up guns and stuff like that. They turn into drugs and weed and alcohol, opening up their souls, opening up their their bodies to be inhabited by a demon, sex, and all of this. And some of them just want attention. Some of them crying out for love, you know. They need prayer. They need to be delivered. And the devil gets you mad with them. Yeah, you stop praying for them. But pray, pray. Satan don't got no power. Satan don't got no power. He want them young, innocent souls. But there's something that's be said. There is a power. There is a lot of power. And the prayers 
of a mother and a father over their children. You have birthed them children into the earth. There is something about the prayers of a mother and a father. So pray. And then there's some, but that's a whole nother topic. But anyway, but these young folk, they need prayer. They need deliverance. You know, you got to lay hands on some of these folk. Got to train their minds, teach them. You know, so that's all I want to say. Y'all have a blessed day, a blessed Monday. Let's pray for these young folk. let's pray for them. Y'all have a blessed day. If nobody told you that they love you today, I'm telling you, I love you. Your little country bunkin sister loves you. We are the light of the world, and we can never let our lights grow dark. We got to keep shining bright, and we know that the blood of Jesus, Yeshua, our friend, our brother, our Savior, his blood is the only blood that has some power. Have a blessed day.